Okay, this is the last lesson in our trigonometry unit. Today we're going to be looking at problems where we have multiple triangles that we're working with. So these are going to be multi-step problems where we're still using the sine cos and tan ratio to determine some unknown length or um, angle. Okay, example one. Uh, we're going to be calculating the length of CD to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. So let's label this here as X. That's what I'm going to be solving for. Now, it's always important on these multi-step questions to kind of come up with like a little strategy, um, the action plan. Um, so I'm not going to be able to find this length X right away because I know nothing else about that triangle except for this angle 26. So in order to find the missing side length, I at least have to have one other side length. Um, so let's label the triangles I do have here that I can maybe work with. So I've got this yellow triangle, ABD. Um, I do have a side length of that triangle, so maybe I can use that. And then I have this green triangle here with my side length that I want to find. But I don't know much else about that green triangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do, my action plan, game plan, I'll call it, strategy. Step one is I'm going to use the yellow triangle to determine this length here, BD. I'll call it Y. Determine BD, I called it Y, and I've labeled that in yellow using that yellow triangle. Then once I have that side length, I'll be able to find X because I'll at least have one side length on that next triangle. So then I'll go determine X, CD, I've also called it X. There we go. Okay. So let's start first using the yellow triangle. We're going to determine length y there. Um, so we're going to label all of the sides. So this is going to be the angle that I'm focusing on because that's the angle that I'm given. So this is the opposite side. And I want to find the hypotenuse. So if we use SOHCAHTOA, I'll just write SOHCAHTOA at the top. I'm interested in the ratio that involves the opposite and hypotenuse. So I'm going to be using sine here for the first one. So step one, I'll do step one here. I'll write sine of my angle 47 is the opposite. So 4.2 over the hypotenuse, which I'm going to label y. And to solve here, our unknown value is in the denominator. So that's where we switch places. Here, we multiply both sides by y and divide by sine of 47. So we end up with y equals 4.2 divided by sine of 47 degrees. And that in our calculator. So we're going to keep a few extra decimals just so we don't have any rounding errors in the next step. So 47, I'm rounding to its sine. About five point, okay, so I'll keep like five or six decimal places. So 5.742775. What I'd like to do is keep it in my calculator. I'll put dot, dot, dot. I like to keep it in my calculator just so I can like possibly use it directly again in the next step. So I don't erase it from my calculator. I just leave it there for now. And then, so that was step one. So I'm going to just highlight that in yellow. We found Y. Now for step two, I'm going to use the green triangle. And I know that length now is about 5.7 centimeters. Um, now I can label up my sides again. I'll use so this is going to be the angle that I'm concerned with. So this is the adjacent side, and this is also still the hypotenuse. So this time I'm going to use the cosine ratio. So we have cosine of the angle, 26 degrees, is the adjacent side, so x, over our 5.742775 dot dot dot. Okay, and this time we're going to multiply both sides by that number. Just putting the dot dot dots because it keeps going forever. So we get x equals 
5.742775 times cosine of 26 degrees. Now in my calculator, I already still have this. If you're smart about it, you just leave it in there because you don't even have to type it in again. Your calculator can just use the answer. So I have that answer there. I'm just going to simply press multiply and then I'm going to hit 26 and then cosine of that equals and I get 5.2 approximately and it's a approximate answer so that's my final answer there 5.2 centimeters so again steps are first determine a game plan usually it's two or three steps that you're going to be having to do label anything you need to label and then start with step one and move forward okay now the thing that you will have to realize here and especially going to be important in the next question is you're only allowed to work with right angled triangles in this lesson. Like we've only learned how to use right angled triangles. So you can't use like a larger triangle that's not doesn't have a right angle in it. We have to use right angle triangles. Okay. Example two, calculate the measure of BAC to the nearest degree. So when it's talking about angle BAC, I'll show you what it means. So if I went from B to A to C, it's that angle that gets created there. So it's this large angle here. I want to find that. Okay. I can't directly find that because that's part of a big triangle that does not have a right angle in it. So again, I'm going to use two smaller right triangles here. I have this yellow one and then this blue one, or I'll use green again this green one. So my game plan is first I'm going to determine um, the angle A, the yellow angle A. I'll call it A1. And then I'm going to determine this one, A2, and then I'll add them together to get the large angle A that I'm looking for. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm going to have to do here is figure out what this length is. Because on the green triangle, I only have this 12 centimeters. I don't know this length here. So to figure out this length here, I can use the Pythagorean theorem because I do have two of those sides. So I'm just going to quickly do that on the side here. So this length here is going to be the square root of 13 squared minus 12 squared. So that is 169 minus 144. So this is five centimeters. So that means this part must be 10 centimeters for the whole thing to equal 15. Okay, so now my strategy, my game plan is to first determine angle A1 using the yellow triangle. And then my second step will be determine angle A2 using the green triangle. Okay. So step one, we have the, let's label our sides. So the angle I'm looking for is up there. So this is the hypotenuse and this side is the opposite side. Okay. So I want to use sine. So I'll just write Sokotoa up here. So I want to use sine because I have the opposite side and I've got the hypotenuse side on that yellow triangle. So sine of A1 equals uh, opposite, so 5 divided by 13. So A1 equals inverse sine of 5 divided by 13. And we use the inverse sign because we're solving for the angle here. Um, so what's inside the sine function and the inverse button is what's going to do that for us. Okay, so I, in my calculator, oops, I type 5 divided by 13 and then I press this inverse sign button. Oops, I think I should have pressed equals first. 5 divided by 13 and then equals and then I press inverse sign. You may have to do it in a different order. 22.6. So I'll keep a couple of decimal places just in case I, so I don't have a rounding error. So 22.62, let's say. And then step two, 
So that's step one finished. I'm done dealing with this yellow triangle. Now I'm going to deal with the green triangle. And so I'm first going to label my triangle here. This is the opposite side and this is the adjacent. So I'm going to use this time the tan ratio, which has the opposite and adjacent in it. So I have tan of, tan of A2 is opposite, so 10 divided by 12. So A2 equals the inverse tangent of 10 divided by 12. So let's see what I get. 10 divided by 12 equals, and then the inverse tangent. Oops, I think I pressed something wrong. 10 divided by 12, and then the inverse tangent. Yeah, 39.8. Now finally, the last step is going to be angle A is going to be 22.62 degrees plus 39.8 degrees, which is approximately 22.62 plus 39.8. It's about 62.4 degrees. Okay. So good. So um, that's finding a missing angle when you need multiple steps there. And again, the key point is you only are allowed to use right angle triangles when you're using sine, cos, and tan in this, in this way. Okay, last one is a very classic question. It's finding the height of something tall, knowing some other lengths. Okay, so let's say I have two buildings here. It says from the top of a 20 meter tall building, so there's a surveyor standing on this smaller building here. Surveyor. And he's trying to figure out how tall is this big building across the street. Okay, but we what we do know is that this length here is 20 meters, the question says. So the angle of elevation to the top of another building is 30 degrees, and the angle of depression is 15. So remember the angle of elevation and depression are always with the horizontal. So the horizontal is here. So the angle of elevation is like the angle looking up. So that would be 30 degrees and the angle looking down is 15 degrees. So, and we know this length here, 20. And it says, determine the height of the taller building to the nearest 10. So we do know part of the height. We know that this first part is 20, but we do not know this height here. I'm gonna call it H for height. Um, and, and what we also don't know is this length here. I'm gonna call this X. Actually, I'll label this not H because it's not really the entire height. I'll label it Y just for clarity. Okay, so I'm going to come up with a game plan here. I can't get Y directly because I know nothing of that triangle up top other than the angle there. So I know nothing in this green triangle other than this 30 degree angle. So I can't start with the green triangle. I'm going to start with this yellow triangle here. And I do know more information about this yellow triangle. I have one of the sides 20 and then I can find what side length X is. So let's make my game plan. So it's gonna be first to solve for length X. And I'm gonna use the yellow triangle to do that. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna use the green triangle. I'll have length X now, so I'll be able to determine length Y. And then, of course, at the very end, I'm going to have to add Y and the already given 20 meters to get like the entire height of the building. Okay, so at the very end, I'm going to be determining the height and it's going to equal Y plus 20 meters. Okay, all right, so let's do step one. So step one is determining X. So I'm going to have to label my triangle. So this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent. So I'm going to use the tan ratio. So tan of angle 15, 15 degrees is the opposite, 20 over the adjacent, which we don't know, x. I'll put meters, there we go. And in the case where we have our unknown in the denominator, we're going to switch places, multiply both sides by x, divide by 10 of 15. We get x is equal to 20 meters divided by tangent of 15 degrees. 
and that's what we'll type into our calculator. Okay, 20 divided by 15 ten equals about 74.64. Now I'm going to leave that on the screen and hopefully I can use it in the next step, but I'll write down a couple of decimal places. So 74.641. I'll also write it here. 74.641. Okay, now in the next step here, so that was the yellow triangle that we used to get our length. Now in step two, we'll start it up here. We're going to use the green triangle. So we need to label our green triangle. We have the adjacent side, and we want to determine the opposite side this time. So we have tangent of 30 degrees this time. Equals the opposite, which we don't know, divided by the adjacent. That's our missing one we found from step one. And so in this one, we want to determine the numerator. So we do the opposite of dividing by 74, which is multiplying both sides by 74. And this is where I can use my calculator strategically, because I already have that number still hanging out there. So we get y is equal to 74.641 times 10 of 30 degrees. That's going to be approximate. So let's see. So I'm going to still, I still have that number in there and I'm just going to simply press multiply by 10 of 30 degrees. And we get 43.09. It says to the nearest tenth of a meter, so I'll keep one decimal place, so 43.1. So that was the green answer there, that was Y. And then finally, my height is going to be y plus 20, because I want to get the height of the entire building, not just length y. So it's going to be 43.1, and I'll do a little squiggly because it's not exact, plus 20 meters, which is approximately 63.1 meters. So that's how tall the other building is. Okay.